With SE Connect, you can learn a 15-minute comprehensive manual therapy treatment that will set you apart from other massage therapists. SE Connect is the only multidisciplinary platform with practice tools, business tools, and a community of practitioners speaking the same language. Check it out at network.structuralelements.com. As a massage therapist, you know that truly the world's most beautiful machine is in your hands. You help relieve the pain and pressures that hold your clients back from fully enjoying life. The CBD Clinic Massage Collection uses ingredients from nature to deliver strong, effective, temporary pain relief with aromatic botanicals and natural emollients like CBD. Our tiered pain products let you personalize your massage to meet each client's needs. Be your client's hero by giving them the massage treatment of their dreams with CBD Clinic. Learn more at cbdclinic.co. Welcome to the ABMP Podcast. My name is Darren Buford. I'm Editor-in-Chief of Massage and Body Work Magazine and Senior Director of Communications for ABMP. And I'm Kristen Coverley, Licensed Massage Therapist and ABMP's Director of Professional Education. Kristen, tell our listeners about our special upcoming event. I would love to. Listeners, I'm very excited to invite you to the first ever ABMP Movie Night. That's right, Movie Night. On Tuesday, June 22nd, we're showing the documentary Touched, A Massage Story. The documentary's director, Chandler Tofa, and its subject, ABMP member and massage therapist, Jonathan Grassi, will join us for a live Q&A session after the movie screening. This is going to be so much fun, and it's free for everyone in the profession, ABMP members and non-members. Excited to join us? Learn more and reserve your seat at abmp.com slash ce dash socials. Our guest today is Alicia Crook. Alicia is a business coach and mentor for massage therapists, sharing the tactics she used to create her business success over 16 years. Alicia is a diploma qualified remedial massage therapist and uses modalities such as Bowen and craniosacral therapy and has a CERT 4 in workplace training and assessments, which she used while teaching massage for several years. Through her career and business experience, Alicia discovered who she needed to be and what is required to run a deeply satisfying massage business. Now, she takes the fully booked without burnout blueprint to other therapists around the world to create more success and passion. For more information, visit massagechampions.com. Hello, Alicia, and hello, Kristen. Hello. Thank you so much for being with us again as a repeat pod guest, I'm going to say. So if you haven't listened to Alicia's first pod, go ahead and check that one out. It's also incredible. Today, we are focusing on Instagram and why, how, and when you would want to use it as a massage therapist and body worker. So let's start with your story with Instagram, Alicia. So you're now what we would call an Instagram master. I'm going to call you that. But your relationship with Instagram didn't begin that way. Uh, did you embrace using Instagram for your business right from the beginning? No, not at all. I hated it. I, I love Facebook. I'm like, yeah, Facebook all over. Great. Lots of fun. I've been using it since like 2007, 2008. No worries at all. Instagram, I'm like, oh, it's just, it's all these bits. They don't make sense. And I was having a conversation with a very good friend of mine one day who was like, I'm like, I just, I just don't get it. That's just not for me. Other people can use Instagram, not me. And she's like, cool story, bro. How's it working for you? Maybe I should have a look at how I could potentially be using this for business. So Alicia, why was it important and why was it worth it to put the time and effort into creating and maintaining an Instagram account for you? I think it was the sheer statistics, like just looking at the numbers to go, well, why would I, if I'm going to invest time, energy and effort in learning something new and it's a, something that you do have to continually feed, essentially it's a photo and video sharing network that's now owned by Facebook. Um, it has, in 2019, it had 1 billion users. Uh, by the time it launched in 2010, it had a, within a month, it had a million users um, and 10 million within one year. And I just thought, okay, well, obviously there's a lot of other people using this platform and potentially they might also be my target market. So uh, by 
October 2015, it had 40 billion photos uploaded to the platform. I just figured that's a lot of avocado toast. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of breakfast photos. There's a lot of like hashtag, you know, uh, Fitspo, people like flexing at the gym and stuff like that. I'm like, surely we can create some, some really good quality stuff to put on this. Um, some of my other research showed me that 51% of the platform users use the platform daily which is huge. That's a huge statistic to be able to say. And 35% of them look at it several times a day. Um, but what really got me was that there are 15 million registered businesses on there currently and 1 million active advertisers daily. And this, this was the bit that really was like, if none of those statistics got me, 50% of users follow at least one business to learn about their products and services. And I'm like, that's a lot of people out there that are actually actively searching for how can I connect with businesses? And because big businesses are thinking big advertising, there's so much more options, although some of them are on the platform as well. There's also lots of options for smaller businesses to be able to teach and educate and inspire their clients to be able to do really cool stuff. So that's why I was like, okay, I'm, I'm willing to join the platform and I'm willing to play the game. Let's see what we have to do to be able to play in this space. Alicia, I totally agree. Instagram is the only social media platform that I actually actively follow some businesses, especially small businesses. I would never do that on Facebook or Twitter. It just doesn't even pop in my brain to do that. But on Instagram, when I'm eating at a restaurant or I've interacted with a business, usually something that I might do in the next 24 hours is actually follow them for a while. And if they've got good content or material that I can relate to, I'm all in now. Before we go further, though, let's make sure everyone that we're all on the same page, we have an accurate understanding of the components of an Instagram account. So we don't just start throwing out terms and people are lost in our wake as we keep moving forward. So let's start with the basics. Please tell us what these aspects of an Instagram account are. Bio, feed, and hashtags. Great question. So basically, Instagram has a bio, which is where you get to share a little bit of who you are. Now, because Instagram is kind of, it's slick, you know, it's super awesome, they only want 150 characters in that bio, which means you get to explain, you need to be able to explain quite a lot in a very short space of time. You get 150 characters, including spaces. So it's kind of like you've got to condense, like take out everything you want to say. Um, I imagine if you were spending $500 a word, you would spend a lot less words. So that's kind of how you've got to concisely fit it in. Um, you can choose like a paragraph so if you and, and by all means look at other people's because obviously they're doing something well. So have a look around to see what you find. You leave this here that it'll be in a paragraph or they'll choose dot points. And if you want to be super cool, you can put emojis at the start of the dot points instead of dots. You want to be able to convey who you are, make it personal, uh, what you do, why people should follow you. Like, are you going to be able to give them health tips or stretching or something like that? So just share out of the abundance of what you would share with your clients anyway. And that's kind of, the, that's the reason that people would want to follow you. Um, and always have a call to action, which means follow me or look at our website or book online. Like make sure that there's a reason that they're actually going to do something. So we call that the stick, uh, the call to action. So that's kind of the very first element of Instagram. The next element is your feed. And this is the bit that if you go to a business page, you're going to see nine tiles or nine photos that are up uploaded. And that's what's called the feed. And so if you just sort of scroll through Instagram, that's usually what you're scrolling through. Now, in our feed, this is usually rather curated. And what I mean by that is it's not just uh, a mad dog's breakfast. It's meant to be really thought through and it kind of matches one another, which is where the kind of Instagram it's a, it's a little bit different to Facebook. Facebook, you can just chuck anything on there and it's kind of like, you know, it's just going to deal with it. I think of it like an old ute. You can just chuck a bunch of stuff on and it's going to be fine. Instagram, a little bit like more like a Porsche or Ferrari or something really lovely that you've got to kind of take a little bit more care of. Essentially, your feed is where all the pictures go. You can also upload videos and things like that, but that's the main bit that people are going to see when they come. One other element that I think is important to note is hashtags, which is for those that are like, I'm not going to assume any level of knowledge here. It's the it's the symbol above the three on your keyboard, which is hashtag. So hashtags, if you, you put a hashtag a symbol and then you put the whatever word it is without a space, that's actually how people search for things. So it's kind of like your super highway or your, your Google Maps um, in the Instagram platform. If you want to find something, you would search usually a hashtag. 
So when you're uploading a photo, you also need to be able to have a few hashtags in there, um, up to 30 hashtags per post. And that is really how people will find you. Uh, and it, it's kind of, it's just one of the ways that, that Instagram works. So you've got your bio, which is a little bit about you. You've got your feed, which is the photos and videos that are in your, um, in your, the tiles on your feed. Um, and then you've got hashtags, which is how people search for things. And how you can be part of a bigger conversation, right? So you're not just speaking to your own followers, but potentially you're speaking to anyone who has searched on hashtag massage or hashtag bodywork, right? That's exactly right, which is really cool. And it means that you can get your message out to more people. Let's take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors. Anatomy Trains is happy to announce our return to the Dissection Lab in person, January 10th to the 14th, 2022, at the Laboratory of Anatomical Enlightenment in Boulder, Colorado. We are thrilled to be back in the lab with Anatomy Trains author, Tom Myers, and Master Dissector, Todd Garcia. Join students from around the world and from all types of manual, movement, and fitness professions to explore the real human form, not the images you get from books. This is an exclusive invitation. Email info at anatomytrains.com if you'd like to join us in the lab. AVMP members get 20% off the list price on all Handspring Publishing titles, including The Accidental Business Owner by Kelly Bowers, LMT. This book is your toolkit for growing and sustaining a health and wellness business. Visit handspringpublishing.com to learn about these and other books. ABMP members visit abmp.com slash discounts to access your discount code and save 20% on all list prices with free shipping to U.S. and U.K. addresses. Find your next favorite book at handspringpublishing.com. Now let's get back to the podcast. Okay, let's stay in that realm, that beginner's realm. We're going to hold stories and reels just for a second. So Alicia, for the new Instagram user, where does someone start? Give us a good week one goal for someone just beginning. So the first thing is create your account, open up the Instagram app, download it on your device and start to use it. Um, you need to write your bio and, and just post daily because the more you post on the platform, the more you get used to, well, that worked and that didn't. Um, action precedes clarity. It's okay if it's a little bit all over the place at the start. Um Definitely follow other businesses. In fact, if you really want to give this, if you're like, if you've made a big decision to go, right, I've never done this before, but it's, you know, some person created an account from a years ago and I don't even know where the login is and I'm going to just have to give this a crack. They suggest that you follow 100 people a day, which allows you to kind of get lots of traction. It's a huge, it's a huge investment. You don't have to do that many, but it's kind of like you'll get bigger traction quicker if you're able to go and do that. So just go and follow 100 people a day in your area, in your niche, in your space that you can kind of understand what they're like. Some ideas of your first post is take a selfie. It's okay. It's Instagram. This is exactly where selfies are perfect for. And then introduce yourself. And we have a little formula for this that it's like, you can say something like, welcome to those that have found me. So you post your photo and then you post a bit of text. Um, and it's uh, hi, I'm Alicia. Um, I do, or I'm a massage therapist. But what I really do is help people out of chronic pain. I started this because dot dot dot. I help people who dot dot dot. If this resonates with you, you can get in touch by. You can either put your. You can kind of put a link like a website or something like that. So if you want to be really cool on Instagram, you can get people to send you a direct message or a DM. So you can put in there, if this resonates with you and you think that I can help, send me a DM. And everyone will be like, ah, oh, you're just totally all over for Instagram. Wow, then, you know, direct messaging. Oh, my goodness. And they can actually send a message to your inbox. Now, if you're, you can even look, link them to Facebook and things like that. Don't worry about all that kind of stuff for the first week. But it will look really cool if you introduce yourself and put, send me a DM, people can send you a direct message. Um, some things that you can actually, like, post in terms of ideas Take a photo of your massage table. Take a photo of the towels that are in your room. You know, have a photo of somebody drinking water or you drinking water as a reminder to stay hydrated. Um, any products that you might sell, um, maybe a hot tip, like here's me stretching with my favorite, you know, so I stretch or pec stretch, showing someone how to stretch through a door or something like that. Like you can actually be quite creative and really educational. 
And that's what really appeals to me about how we can actually educate our clients on self-care and take the heartbeat of what it is that we do and, and, you know, put it through a social media platform. Alicia, should all of this content be professional only? Is there a balance of me as a person? Should I be doing personal? Like, hey, this is me out hiking on a day. Should there be a balance of that? Or this is my professional Instagram page and it's only going to be about massage and body work? The way I would answer that is actually through stories. So what we would, how we would actually recommend that is that you have your professional massage and body work stuff that you post on your feed, which is the kind of the more curated, the more imagine that this is the train of thought that you have as a practitioner. This is what I do. This is who I help. This is how I help them. This is how I can help you. And then stories, which is another element of Instagram, is kind of more your personal, you know, hashtag going for brunch, having my avocado on toast, or going hiking in the mountains, which if you think about it, is totally in alignment with what we do as practitioners and living a, a healthy lifestyle, et cetera. Making sure that you're you're still on brand kind of thing, which means you're still living inside the values of what it is. And what I mean by that is you're not kind of out on a Saturday night having a few drinks with a few mates and maybe getting a little bit too crazy and posting that through your business page. That may not be quite so on trend for you as a massage practitioner. Uh, What you do want to have is, yeah, going hiking in the mountains and that kind of, this is me relaxed, you know, on a Saturday, doing stuff with my family or with my friends, and that's totally okay. Tell us about stories. How are they different or better than a regular post? And what type of content should be included in a story? So stories are no better or worse than posting. It's just a different element to the Instagram platform. So as I shared before, stories are a little bit more about you as the business owner. Even if you have a team and and maybe you're not the main focus, the idea is that it's kind of more, it's more personal. It's more bringing your own creative flair. It's also ethereal media, which means it disappears after 24 hours. So your feed stays where it is as long as you leave it up there. Uh, Your stories actually disappear after 24 hours. Now, stories are usually fun and creative. You can add music to them. You can add filters. Um, Instagram loves it when we use different elements. The more elements of Instagram you use, the more it will reward you by showing that stuff to more people clever from a business point of view to get more users using more elements of the program so other people will then use more stuff great job so the idea behind it is that you can be a little bit more personal you can post stuff on there now one of the cool things that that does happen with a story is that you can also highlight it which becomes like a brochure on your feed so when you go to your feed and you have a look at you see your bio that you've written with your 150 characters and underneath you'll see your your feed of what you've created there is some middle section that will actually allow highlights, which is where you take your story and go, oh, I'm going to highlight that. So you might have things like client testimonials. So if a client has said, I love this person, it's amazing, then you might say, thank you so much to so-and-so. You'll write something as a story. And so you share that to all the people that follow you. Fantastic. Thank you, algorithms, for going out there. And then you can also highlight that. And anybody shares that with you and you put it through a story, you can highlight it to that particular part. You could also do a highlight of your team, for example, if you have one. Or you could highlight different modalities that you do. So if you do dry needling or cupping or yoga or whatever it is that you're doing, you could actually highlight the different modalities. And it kind of becomes like a brochure. So that when someone comes to your feed, they can go, oh, great. So they do cupping and they do dry needling and they do these things. Fantastic. So it gives them a little bit more of an understanding of who you are as a practitioner and what you offer as as a business. So Alicia, let's talk about reels. This is something that I don't know very much about. I'm familiar with stories, but not quite that much with reels. What's a reel and how could MTs use those effectively? A reel is Instagram's answer to TikTok. So TikTok was the was sort of started, got really popular in 2020 because a lot of people were at home doing nothing and a lot of very funny and humorous people are using the platform. I love it. So it's a 15 second video. And because Instagram was like, oh, we don't want all these people leaving this platform, we'll just make it ourselves and bring them across. Well played. And as I said, they will reward first fast followers. So the more we get on board with this, the quicker, the more traction you'll actually get on the Instagram platform. So our feed and our stories are for our followers. So if people come along and find us and just say, yes, I want to follow you for your great content, fantastic. Reels are a 15-second video that you create that's actually public. 
So it's a way of being able to say, hey, I do all this amazing stuff and I, I this is what I stand for and being able to have more people follow you. So they it was launched in Australia and the US in sort of uh, we got it over here in August 2020 and it was a bit earlier for you guys. You can use effects, you can have sound effects, you can use, uh, you can do dancing, you can have music, you can speak. They're just really fun and creative. Um, for example, you could record just a kind of a couple of ideas. You could record a time lapse of you rolling all your towels for the day or the week. Or, and setting up your table with all the sheets and the towels and the linen and stuff like that and use that as a reel. And it might say, like, it might have a, a song that's trending now with you doing that going, the life of a massage therapist or something like that. Now, for a lot of people, it's like, well, how is this going to help the body? And I understand, but remember that this is fun and creative and it's okay to get outside your comfort zone. Um, and yeah, you might feel a bit dorky, but you know, you didn't walk into a shop asking for a TikTok light, did you? No, no. You get this great podcast to be able to learn some of these things and go, okay, I'm just going to relax. There are some fantastic people out there using this platform. Um, for example, if we talk, you know, stats, because this is what I love, Reels were launched in India and there was about 7 million people on the platform. And within one month of Reels being released, they had 7.8 million people on the platform, all using it regularly, all uploading stuff, et cetera. So the idea behind it is that Instagram wants people to be on the platform more. So if they create something fun and entertaining and kind of, you know, slightly dorky in some ways, but kind of fun then we can harness it as practitioners to be able to educate and teach. Okay, Alicia, so we're doing all this. We're putting all our effort, time, our love, passion, sweat into Instagram. How do we know if it's working? So I think, right, if you've got a business account on Instagram, you also get analytics that come with that. How do you use those analytics effectively? How do you use that data? Look, there can be, you can, you can literally analyze everything on any social media platform and spend all your time analyzing the things that you did or didn't do. Um, so there's really a few things that, that matter. So really it's getting a baseline for where you're at right now. And if you're just starting out, you've probably got zero followers and obviously you're not reaching anybody. So there's kind of uh, four things that we look at. And the first one is followers. So how many followers do I have? Now, Instagram is quite different to other platforms in that people follow and unfollow all the time. So if you, you know, if you get 10 followers in a week and you're like, yes, and then eight of them unfollow you, please don't put, you know, please don't feel bad about that. It's really, really normal that people will actually go up and down and they follow and unfollow all the time. It's just, it's just the, the way of Instagrammers. And the next thing is impressions. And this is about how many likes per post. Now, Instagram a little while ago took out that feature in that when you go to a feed, you can't see how many people have liked it because it wanted to sort of take around, oh, I'll look at that because 21,000 people have liked it. No, Instagram doesn't want you to see that. It wants you to know if this is right for you to actually look at. So we can't actually see that uh, unless we go to someone's page and kind of count them down. However, we can see it in our analytics. So, you know, oh, that post got a lot of likes or that post got a lot of um, impressions. And so I can kind of see, did people comment on it? Uh, did someone share it? Did someone save it? Did someone direct message it to a friend? You can't see where that went, but you can see what has happened to it. Um, the reach is how many of your posts are getting out to people. And this is often qualified by your hashtags. So remember we said use 30 hashtags? Got to use 30 hashtags. Uh, as many hashtags as you can per post and you can copy and paste them. So you might go, okay, these are the hashtags I'm going to use and you can copy and paste them in like the notes section of your phone and just add them in each time. So you don't have to kind of sit there typing out because I had to do it at the start and I was like, really, who has time for this stuff? Because I don't. Um, and then one of my friends said, you can just save it in your notes section of your phone. I'm like, well, that's that's a clever human. Uh, so big brain thinking, save that to a note section of your phone um, and kind of search through so that you've got that bulk and just import them each time or copy and paste them in each time. Discovery is how many people are discovering you from what you're putting out there. And if you're using things like your feed and stories and reels, more people are likely to discover you because the more parts of the platform you use, the more Instagram will reward you and actually show that to more people. Okay, let's bring the podcast to a close. Now that we've got the basics down, how can a massage therapist use Instagram as an effective marketing tool to attract new clients? 
So the first one is about following people. What this does is, is kind of build your audience and also help you to see what's, what else is out there and what else is working. So follow 100 people a day. Even if you're like, that's a lot, just do it for the first seven days. So kind of getting your, it's just getting yourself into the Instagram platform. You can then invite people to follow you. So invite as many people as you can, family, friends, colleagues, old teachers, whoever you've got and get them all to follow you because even at the start, you just want to get social proof that, yes, I'm not just a brand new business. I haven't just joined the Instagram. No, I've been here for ages. Look at this. It's amazing. There's all these people following me. They may fall off, but at least invite them as your, well, I call them Santa's little helpers, people that help you kind of, you know, move through the journey. Share your story. So the first post can be about you as a practitioner and your story. Why did you get into massage? Why is it that you love helping the kind of people that you do? Just really share your story of your journey into the into massage and, and why that's important for other people. Be consistent and be consistent for 30 days. So really it's about going, okay, I'm going to choose the, the branding um, uh, that's how I'm going to post. I'm going to post regularly. I'm going to do one story a day. I'm going to do one image a day and I'll see how I go from there. You can post like 30 stories or more every single day if you want to, but we're just starting week one, step one, you know, let's just 101. That's basically what we want to do. And the other thing in order to get clients is about having a call to action. So remember in some of your posts, book now, have your link to your website in your bio which means you can put link in bio because Instagram doesn't necessarily like links in posts. So you can put link in bio as the tagline and that's your call to action. So save time book online is a great call to action. And if you've got online bookings that you allow in your clinic and then you can link them back to your bio. So in your bio is your website and then people can actually book because at the end of the day, yes, we want to be helpful. Yes, we want to educate. Yes, we want to share the heartbeat of what we do. And we want to get clients from it. So being able to actually get them to, to call you, to book, whatever it is, however you like them to get in touch with you. If you want to get all fancy pants, go DM. Send me a DM and like I'll book you in now. Um, awesome, but that may not be where you're at and that's okay. So link in bio is a great place to start. I want to thank our guest today, Alicia Crook. Listeners, find out more information about Alicia at massagechampions.com. Listeners, when I'm not working on the ABMP podcast, I work with the communication services team at ABMP to produce Massage and Body Work magazine. Our goal is to bring you insightful technique articles and valuable feature stories about the issues that are important to professional massage therapists and body workers. A print subscription to the magazine is included with every ABMP membership, and an online edition of the magazine is free to the profession at massageandbodyworkdigital.com. Thanks, Alicia, and thanks, Kristen. Alicia, thank you so much. That was such great content and information. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Members are loving ABMP 5-Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology, two quick reference web apps included with ABMP membership. ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos plus Origins, Insertions, and Actions for the 83 Muscles Most Commonly Addressed by Body Workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. ABMP members, log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the Featured Benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com slash more.